My Rectech RT680 has been an amazing addition to my barbecue tools. It's absolutely made my life a lot more simpler, a lot easier, and made my food taste better. So I got really excited when I heard Rectech was offering the Wi-Fi controller as an upgrade to the RT680. Rectech made the announcement they were releasing their new Wi-Fi panel as an upgrade for the RT680. Man, I got really excited. I tried to buy the control panel as soon as it was released to the minute. It was 12 o'clock on, I forget whatever day it was, but I tried to buy it that moment. I had to wait for months because the demand was much higher than the supply, but I finally got my new Wi-Fi control panel. When you take the Wi-Fi controller out of the box, it looks a little bit intimidating, but rest assured, it's really not that bad. It's about a 15 minute procedure and you don't have to have any special skills or any special tools to do it. A flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, and a socket to help get the screws apart. The old control panel on the RT680 is a great control panel. It's very simple to use. It's very simple to understand what's going on. It's just been a great control panel, but the new control panel allows you to connect to the grill with an app on your phone and therefore turn the grill on and off as well as raise and lower the temperature. It also has a probe that you can monitor the internal temperature of whatever you're cooking. In fact, it allows up to two probes. And so it's real simple. You're gonna go right underneath the control panel and you're gonna loosen the two flathead screws. And then you're gonna pull the lid off, but be very careful. You never know what's hiding in places like this. And sure enough, I had a old bee or wasp nest and it looks like they had all evacuated already, but you never know. So just be careful whenever you're taking the cover off anything like this. And so with the socket and a screwdriver, then I wanna go ahead and remove the screws from the front of the existing control panel. And that is really all that holds it in. When you pull it out, you're gonna see a bunch of wires connected to the control panel and you get very, very nervous because you're not sure how you're gonna be able to ever get this thing back together if you take these wires off. But rest assured, I have a chart here that's gonna help you dramatically. It's not a big deal. Pull the wires off their existing connections. It might take a little bit of a, a little bit of a tug because you know they've kind of been on there. It depends on how old it is. And then you're gonna take the new control panel and here's the chart for you. You're simply just gonna follow this chart. There's nothing confusing about it. There is a double white wire, a double black wire, a red wire, a yellow wire, a purple wire, and two RTD wires. And the panel is labeled pretty clear. Uh, you need to look it over and make sure you're hooking to the correct uh, spot, but it, you know, you can see here that it has the AUG, it has the COM, it has the marks on the control panel that allow you to use this chart that I gave you to make the connections to make sure this thing's going to work properly. Don't forget to pull the film off the front of the control panel because if you put it through the housing first, it's not gonna come off cleanly. You're gonna have plastic that's stuck between the housing and the control panel. There's a couple of important things when mounting the controller back into the housing. You wanna make sure you grab the green ground wire. It's gonna to need to go on the inside screw that's closest to the grill underneath the nut that you're gonna put on in just a second. And you can see here, here's a nice view of what it looks like mounted and I'm starting to get things back together. 
I have the green wire, the ground wire mounted behind the nut. And then there's only one other thing that you need to do. The other thing that you want to make sure you do is you take the little black wire there and you're going to want to stick that to the housing or you can just let it hang. That is, it's like an antenna. So that's going to help make sure you get the reception that you need to make the grill operate properly. And guys, that's basically it. You're just going to put the screws back in. Be careful not to over tighten them or strip them. I was a little bit intimidated by doing this and this, this Wi-Fi controller that I was so excited about sat on the shelf for I'll bet an extra month after I received it just because I thought it was gonna take a lot of effort and you know a lot of thinking and head scratching and it just didn't. It's a 15 minute procedure and it makes a night and day difference. You download the app, Rectech Grills, and power the app up. It'll walk you through some simple steps after two or three minutes getting the app set up, you're able to fire that grill up and get your set point to where you want it and start cooking. It's really just that simple. That's so awesome. Just the temperature right here. 275 is where we're cooking. That's really awesome. If you have one of the older Rectex, I really suggest that you look into getting this Wi-Fi controller. It makes life even more simpler. Life was simple already with the Rectech, but this Wi-Fi controller really made things even better.